Hi, and welcome to this quick overview of Reduxio's backdating technology. Over the next few minutes, I'll be talking about the challenges with data and application protection today, how the backdating technology can help address these challenges, and how backdating actually works. One of the main challenges that storage administrators face today is to ensure that data is protected at all times. What protects your data today in case of a volume or database corruption? How fast could you recover your data using your existing tools? How much data would you lose? What is the cost to your business of that loss? Now imagine a world in which you could recover your data to a second before the problem occurred. Sounds good, right? With Reduxio Backdating, it's possible. Reduxio's backdating technology, integrated into our flash storage systems, provides the ability to go back in time at one second granularity for any volume. Backdating is always on and does not require any setup. Now, let's look at how you would use backdating to recover data or create a copy of a volume from a given point in time. The first option is to clone a volume from a specific point in time, in the past. The clone operation instantly creates a separate, thin, writable copy of the volume based on the selected second. A clone takes up no space till it is written to. A clone volume is like any other volume in the system. It can be cloned, its parent volume can be deleted, and it can be assigned to a host. In addition to recovering from corrupted data, clones can be used to maintain multiple versions of applications and datasets in test and development. Since clone volumes are completely independent of each other, it is possible to use a clone as the primary copy of data for an application. Now let's look at how backdating works. Backdating is not implemented by taking a snapshot every second. It just would not work and would be very inefficient. Backdating is enabled by Reduxio's Time OS with its unique metadata architecture that tracks every write to the system and associates a time identifier with every update. This implementation makes the volume's history available at all times, and to retrieve a volume's data from any point in its history just requires querying the Time OS metadata with the relevant timestamp. This is what makes instantaneous access to data from any second in the past possible. So how far back can one go at second granularity? Theoretically, there is no limit. However, practically, how much second-level recovery is available is controlled by a volume's history policy. When a volume is created, it has a default policy, which is by default, pro. The default policy provides eight hours of one-second recovery. After, that history is thinned out, based to hourly, daily, weekly, and monthly recovery points up to a maximum retention period. Any policy can be modified on the fly, and changes take immediate effect for all the volumes that have the policy. The space consumption for backdating is kept at a minimum, since all data across all volumes, current and historical data, is globally deduped and compressed with Reduxio no-dupe technology. Back to data recovery. The second option is to recover a volume in place using revert. The volume is restored to the exact state it was in at the time chosen. Backdating eliminates the need of consistency groups to recover complex application since data is consistent across all volumes every second. Now, for example, a business application running on several servers with different operating systems and different volumes. To recover this application using backdating, all you need to do is to backdate each volume to the exact same time. An additional capability associated with backdating is bookmarks. Using a bookmark, you can tag any point in the history of a volume with a text label that is meaningful to you. For example, the state of a volume before a software upgrade. The bookmark can then be used to recover data by creating clones from, or reverting volumes to, the bookmark time. By default, a bookmark is removed based on the history policy of a volume. However, a bookmark can be configured such that it required explicit removal. This capability can be used to put data on hold for any duration. I will now demonstrate Reduxio's backdating technology using a demo application. The Corrupt My Database application inserts a series of movie quotes into a Microsoft SQL Server 2012 database, one each second. To simulate a corruption, I connect to the database server and choose Drop Table. 
As you can see, the application terminates because it cannot access the database and an error message is displayed in the log window in the bottom right corner of the application window. Remember the last few items that were inserted from the log before the error message. When I open SQL Server Management Studio and refresh the page, you will notice the error message that is displayed after I drop the table. In order to recover the application, I first disconnect the volume. Then I navigate to the Hosts and Volumes page in Reduxio Storage Manager and search for the volume that hosts the database. Then I backdate the volume using Revert to one second prior to the table drop. After reverting the volume, I go back to the demo application and reconnect the volume I just reverted. The application restarts and continues from the point to which I recovered it. From the application log window, you notice that we lost only a few seconds of data. To conclude, in this video, we talked about the various capabilities provided by backdating for data and application recovery. We also talked about how backdating simplifies management and eliminates the need for consistency groups. We also demonstrated the power of backdating for recovering databases using a corrupt My Database demo application with RTO and RPO in the order of seconds. For more information, visit our website at www.reduxio.com or feel free to contact us via LinkedIn or Twitter. Thank you for listening.